Hi everyone, it's Lisa here. I'm back today with a couple of cards for you. I'm going to be creating two cards with a really lovely die from Poppy Stamps and I'm going to do two colourful backgrounds and I'm also going to show a couple of ways to add sparkle to your projects. And I'm going to start off by creating both of the background panels. For my first panel, I'm just going to do some ink blending. I've got picked raspberry, festive berries, carved pumpkin, mustard seed and twisted citron. And I'm using Distress Inks today and some Nina Solar White 80 pound card stock. I'm starting off with picked raspberry and as you can see, I'm tapping off the ink onto some scrap paper before I bring the blending tool over to my card stock. I don't always do this, I, I do mostly do it, but it does depend on how inky my pads are and also it depends on how smooth I want my blend to be. And I'm going backwards and forth here between the different colours, making sure that I overlap them as I go. And obviously I go back and I re-blend some of the edges with the previous colour. That just helps to make the blending a little bit more smooth. But for this technique, you really don't need to be that precise because I'm going to add on some paste. It doesn't have to be ultra smooth. And you can see between my orange and yellow there, I haven't got the best blend, but you really won't notice that in the final panel. So I just carry on layering up the ink until I'm happy with it. And I think it's sort of blending as well as I need it to blend. So I'm taking some Nouveau Glimmer paste now. This is the Moonstone variety. I absolutely love this. It's quite an iridescent paste. It's very, very sparkly. And I'm just taking a palette knife and I'm applying that paste from the top down to the bottom of the panel. I did make sure that my panel was dry before I did this, so I just put a heat gun on it for uh, 30 seconds or so. I mean, it was distressing and it had sort of pretty much dried, but with paste, you can sometimes pick up the colour as you drag it down your panel, and I didn't want that to happen, so I dried it off first. And you must clean off your work surface and your palette knife immediately because the paste hardens really, really quickly. For my second panel, I've taken a piece of Nina cardstock. It's about three and a half by four inches, and I'm just gonna pop that down onto some Stick It adhesive. I'm going to be putting some strips of colored cardstock on this panel, and I thought this would be the easiest way of adhering those to it. I will list the cardstock colors below, but I've just trimmed a strip off each of those five colours. It's just under an inch per strip and I'm now going to press those down onto the Stick It adhesive. And I'm making sure that I butt them up really close to each other so I don't see any white card stop peeking through. And you can see I just have a slight small area of white cardstock at the end there which I'll trim off as well as trimming off the excess from each side. So it's a really quick way of adding the cardstock to a card panel. And I take my bone folder and I just run that over the top of the cardstock. I want to make sure that that's adhered really well to the cardstock below. I'm going to move on to the die cutting of the Poppy Stamps frame now. I've got a couple of pieces of Nina cardstock and also some white glitter cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. So I'm going to cut the white glitter cardstock first. As you can see, I'm just taping that down and I'm gonna run that through my Gemini and just set that to one side while I work on all of the other die cuts. And I should just mention here, I did put Stick It adhesive on the back of the glitter card stock and also onto the Nina Solar White before I started doing the die cutting. 
my plan for both of the cards was to stack up the die cuts just so that they would have a little bit of dimension. I wanted to have three layers on each of my cards. So for the one which is going to have the glitter die cut frame, I put two Nina Solar White frames underneath that. And then for the other card, I just had three plain white die cuts stacked all together. I did run into a little bit of bother though because when I first started doing the die cutting what I hadn't realised was that the die wasn't actually going to cut the whole frame it just cuts a window and that essentially meant that each time I did the die cutting the size of the uh, rectangular frame around the outside was slightly different so although I was using similar sized white panels each time I was die cutting I was getting a small variance in the width of that frame so when it came to sticking them together I did make sure that I trimmed them down so that they actually sat uh, correctly on top of each other if I was to do this technique again, I'd make sure that I cut my little panels for die cutting exactly the same before I started. That would have saved me a lot of toing and froing. But as with most card making, you live and learn a few things along the way. And I do think they did end up looking very pretty despite all the trimming down. Moving on now, I'm going to start pulling the cards together. I've put some double sided tape onto the back of each of the coloured panels and I'm going to adhere those to two A2 top folding note cards. I've used Nina Solar White £110 for my base cards and I wanted to use double sided tape because it is really really strong but I do have to hover over the top to make sure that I've lined those up properly. I'm taking some Ranger Multimedia Matte and I'm using that to adhere the die cuts down onto the coloured panels and this is a really strong adhesive and I wanted that because there is a lot of texture on particularly on that panel where you've got the paste so I want to make sure that it is stuck down properly and I did put some blocks down on it as well to make sure that it's stuck down firmly. And I do the same with the second panel. It's really good, this adhesive, because it gives you a bit of wiggle room as well to move the die cut around. I'm using two different sentiments from a set from Clearly Besotted called So Much To Say. I've taken some black cardstock and I'm applying an anti-static bag down onto that before I stamp with Versamark ink and I'm going to heat emboss those with white embossing powder from Hero Arts. The anti-static bag helps to prevent stray bits of powder going onto other parts of the cardstock. So I'm just applying the powder here and I make sure that my heat gun's really hot before I bring it to the paper and then I just heat set that. To trim the sentiments out, I'm using my Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Label dies. I use these on almost every card now. They're so helpful for making sure your sentiment is die cut out straight. And I've popped some foam tape on the back of those and trimmed them down. And I'm now going to add them onto both of the cards. I'm always in need of birthday cards and I don't actually think I have an anniversary card in my stash so I thought it would be good to make one of those today. The poppy stamps die that I was using for the cards today actually comes with a separate die for the floral head as well so it cuts out um, the exact same shape of flower but it embosses some lines on it so it's really nice to layer that up and it gives a little bit of added interest because you've got those embossed lines on it you can't see them there but they are on there and so I cut one from white glitter cardstock and also one from Nina Solar White and just added those on top and to finish them off I took some Nuvo drops, this is dandelion yellow and I just put a little uh, dot of each in the centres of the flowers, I thought that that would finish them off nicely. 
So that finishes my two cards for today. I hope that you found that useful and you picked up some hints and tips along the way. I will link all the supplies down below and over on my blog in case you're interested in what I've used. But thank you so much for watching. I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll be back to see you soon.